Hi everyone, continuing from the first part of the video on this question, we're going to now prove it using the first method we discussed. So I've split it in the Venn diagram A, U, A, B and C into three bits which I've called 1, 2, 3, each of which are mutually exclusive of the other events. Now, so we're going to prove this. First, let's start by writing A union B in relationship to these three subsets. What we can say is A union B must is the union of 1, 2, and 3. Let's see, 1, 2, 3. If the union of all that will cover A union B. Now, but we've already said, we can see that 1, 2 and 3, they're mutually exclusive of each other, as discussed in the first video. And therefore we can apply the third rule, third axiom, sorry, third axiom to say that probability of A union B therefore must be the sum of these three, because those events are mutually exclusive. Like that. Let's call this equation star. Obviously, we know what should be on the right hand side. We've got to introduce a probability of A, introduce a probability of B, and the probability of A intersection B into this. Alright, so let's look at what these things actually are. Probab probability of 1. Probability. Well, not probably. Yes, yeah, so we need to look at what these things are, but let's look at it in terms of the probabilities of A and B, because we want to put that into here. The probability of A look is made up of one and two, each of which are mutually exclusive. So again, applying the third rule of axioms, probability of A must be the the sum of pro of one plus two, since one and two are mutually exclusive. And so I applied the third rule of the axioms of probability to this line. Similarly we can say for the set B, the set B is the union of 2 and 3 and since 2 and 3 are mutually exclusive the probability of B will be the sum of the probabilities of those subsets let us call these two equations double star then you can see that look if we substitute now for 1 2 and th well, 1 and 2 in terms of a and b so probability of a union b substituting say, say this one into here well let's rearrange it p probability of 1 is probability of a minus probability of 2, so we'll write that down. Probability of 1 is probability of A minus probability of 2. Let's put that in brackets to show you that's where it's come from. Probability of 2 here could be expressed as probability of B minus probability of 3, but it, if we look at it it's actually easier if we let's see if we substitute for probability of three. Probability of three is probability of b minus probability of two. So let's leave the second term probability of two as it is. Let's substitute for the third term probability of three, which is probability of b minus probability of two. So we can see that some terms are going to cancel here. So what we have here looks probability of A. Let's mark it off. I've done that one. Plus probability of B. Let's try to rewrite it so it looks more like what we're looking for. You can see I'm, so we've done that one. We've got a minus probability of 2 and a plus probability of 2. So those two cancel. 
And finally, I've got minus probability of 2. Minus probability of 2. But what is probability of 2? But probability of, look in the Venn diagram, probability of 2 is this thing here. Probability of 2 then, that is probability of A and B, isn't it? Because that is the shaded region in yellow. So hence, substituting this into here gives us the result. And we are done. So finally, we can say, so substitute this into uh, this. So we have probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus probability of B minus here, just substitute for this. And we are done. Now remark, so earlier I paused because up here, this is the thing about doing these proofs, you've got to try, sometimes try more than one thing. This thing here, we could have substituted for probability of 2 instead of probability of 3. But if we substitute probability of 2, we'll have had probability of B minus probability of 3, which is B seg segments of B only. And we can see in the final answer, we that's not where we're heading. We don't want probability of B only. Of course, it would be correct, but um, then we'd have to mess about with that to get this. So it would still lead us to the right answer, but just more less uh, less direct than what we've done. So hence, by choosing to substitute for probability three instead, we get it in terms of the prob we have it A and B. We get A and B introduced into the equation, into the workings, and so we're done. Fantastic. So have a look through that. Any questions, drop a line on my uh, what's it? page, statisticsmentor.com, as what you should know by now. Okay, see you.